Hi, Al here. Do you want to know how to crack the 666 code for the name of the Antichrist beast? If so, you've come to the right video. In just a few minutes, you will become an expert witness, able to appear in any court of law and prove beyond all reasonable doubt what the name of the beast will be. And you'll be using scripture so it will be totally objective factual proof now don't fall asleep on this slide this is only here for your future reference when you uh, finish with this video you can come back to the second slide and you have it all all the information on one slide convenient and uh, you'll be an expert and you already know all this stuff that's on this slide so don't try to memorize it i only present it so that you know it's here let's move on to the next slide the only word i want you to look at is wisdom here is wisdom in greek that's sophia and it means you're capable of rational inference you can infer from a word what it its alternate meaning might be what it might allude to and in this case john is saying you have to be capable of this to uncrack his riddle and the first word that we must uh, see what the dual reference is is wisdom now we call the bible wisdom literature in second timothy <clears throat> three fifteen, we learn scripture can make even a child wise unto salvation now that Greek word Sophia in the Septuagint Greek version of Proverbs 1, 2 through 7, the word wisdom appears more than once. And King Solomon says, the words of the wise are necessary to solve riddles. So Solomon is saying, you need the words of the wise to crack a riddle. A Bible riddle and in this case that's scripture so when John says here wisdom is wisdom he is actually saying here scripture is required now once we uh, realize that we have this body of data where the answer to the riddle is that reduces the realm of possibilities immensely now we know we're just looking at men's names and we're going to look for numbers like 666 and we're going to look for calculations that result in 666 that allude to a particular name once we have that then we know what the name of the beast will be now again don't try to study this and we're going to go through each part of John's riddle and then we'll I'll be flashing back to the same slide each time here John said the number is 666 well that's like a biblical illusion the uh, before there was chapter and verses the ancients would say it is written in a prophet or it is or they would use a certain word that kind of reminded the listeners of that particular context of scripture and then they would quote it so when John says 666 and he says it's a man's number you have to look for a man that has the number 666 next to it and then you have located the context of scripture that he is talking about now don't worry this is simple it's a, a very elegant riddle but it is simple john gives you the clue that it's simple he said let him well in greek the word him actually is could be translated let anyone let everyone that has understanding now what is understanding well in the greek it's literally a mind that can reason from cause to effect in other words you have understanding you don't when you feel the wind you know it comes from somewhere and there's a reason for it to exist you have understanding 
And that's all John is saying. If you could reason from cause and, and effect, you got this riddle in the bag. Now, John gave a couple of clues here. He said it's a number of a man and it's the number of a beast. 666 applies to both the man and the beast. Now, this is a riddle. So you have to look for the double meaning, the number of a man. How does a man, how could a number be of him? Well, if he has 666 kids, the number is of a man. Now, it's also the number of the beast. Now, if you notice in this second uh, text, you have the same name, Adonikim, and it says he had 667 children. Well, obviously, John is looking at this difference, too, and he accepts both readings as correct. He doesn't know anything about modern theories of textual errors and all that. He just trusts God's word. So John is looking at this riddle, and he's looking at these texts, and he said, well, the count, you, you can count to the same guy and come up with the number 666 and he is both the beast and that's his name and it just so happens in Neremiah we have 667 Adonikim's father who evidently had the same name as Adonikim so when we count from Adonikim's father all the kids after him is 667 you minus one and that equals the son Adonikim 666 so he technically is both the beast and the man because the number 666 which is the sum of the equation that John didn't give us we had to infer it we needed that inference that mind that had understanding there it is these two texts are like two different witnesses in a court of law standing there looking at the same scene of an accident from different perspectives and yet they're giving the same story that's very solid proof and in the Bible that is called the two witnesses everything is established it's actually a, a law of God now verifying this count to the name and number of the beast has nothing to do with geometria or numerology or any of those complicated systems that are that John couldn't challenge the Greek speaking Christians in Asia to figure out because it was too complicated. They didn't know anything about geometria. I mean, they're Greek speaking uh, Gentiles. They didn't know any of that stuff. John said, if you count as with pebbles, in which case, uh, counting with uh, you got six six seven pebbles take away one you got six 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 hey that's counting with pebbles that's all that's meant here by the word count not gematria not numerology not calculus not any of the nonsense that people come up with John was simply looking at those two verses and he noticed hey if I want to tell you that the name of the beast will be Adonikim this is the way to do it in a riddle and he challenges everyone he's actually he's almost smiling when he does it he says let him who has wisdom let anyone do this it's it's a challenge to everybody it's supposed to be kind of like fun it's not not supposed to be something you uh, fret over and worry about Adonikim will be his name there's no doubt about it we have two witnesses to that effect so there's the count in yellow 667 minus 1 equals the son Adonikim and so the number is of him and it's going in one direction that's going from the father to the son now if we just look at 666 that's going in a different direction to the son because there's no father involved so it's like that's actually like a Janus parallelism I didn't put that in a slide but if you want to look it up Janus parallelism is uh, an Old Testament style uh, pun on words where there's a pivot point in a verse 
and it looks forward and back in the verse to uh, to have meaning. Sometimes they're asymmetric, sometimes they're symmetrical. In this case, it's it's sort of asymmetric. The uh, the count looks back to the father, which is different than the six six six, which looks to the son and to the beast in the opposite direction. So it's asymmetrical. Don't worry about all that. Hey, you're now an expert. You can see from these two verses that John is having fun with us. He's just simply saying, hey, if you you got 666, that shows Adonicum is the beast. And you have 666 after a count, and that, that points to the same guy. And uh, hey, that's the number of a man. Uh, well, I think I turned that around. Sorry. This is where I start boring you because I've already discussed this. It's the number of a man. So he does something that gives birth to this number. He had all them kids. And here you see it. The children of Adonikam 666. And uh, the beast caused the equation to exist, but the number is the number of the beast. So the equation, which we had to infer, because John very slyly didn't give us the equation. He only gave us the sum of the equation. He told us it was 666. So we had to infer that it's 667 minus 1. That points to the dead. 666 points to the sun. They both name Adonikam. We know the name of the beast. There you have it. Same verse again. I'm starting to bore you. I understand that. Uh, you might want to end it here, but please don't. We'll just keep going. See, 666 is what's known as a biblical illusion. Now, most of John's book in Re of Revelation is an allusion to something in the Old Testament. So this is entirely consistent with what John does. And in fact, if you wanted to get technical, when John said, here is wisdom, that's a lot like a, another verse in the book of Revelation, where he said, uh, here is the mind that has wisdom. And there, too, you needed scripture to understand the symbols that are given. And it's you can't interpret kings and mountains. You won't know it, that they both refer to kingdoms unless you have the book of Daniel. And, uh, but that's all that technical stuff is on my site. You could go to endtimenews.net and you could find this article on 666. And there I give you an exhaustive amount of proof that shows you this is exactly what John was doing. I didn't want to do that in a video because I want to keep it short. So there you have it. If you wanted to uh, go back to that second slide and and compare it with this slide and you'll, you'll see it all comes together and you're now uh, maybe you can make some money go to court and, and under under oath give testimony and uh, you will be an expert witness and this is beyond a reasonable doubt you can't look at this and not realize that John did this this is the riddle it's not numerology and it it's the answer is right there in scripture. It's so easy. You wonder why people didn't, uh, only a few people have noticed this. You go on the internet and, and you'll be surprised how few people have really latched onto this. I don't know why, because if you studied the riddle of uh, that Samson gave, that's that's crackable. It's the same thing. You got double and tundra with lion and sweet. And I discussed that on my site. Uh, riddles are they're not that hard to crack. It just takes a little thinking, a little inferential thinking, and a, a mind that has a little wisdom to it, you know. However, that's not the only reason I did this uh, video. You want to get saved from eternal death? This is what you got to do. Now, this is no riddle. Here, John is not being equivocal. There's no double meaning here. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. God cannot lie. I did this over 40 years ago. 
a Baptist radio minister was, he took my call on the phone and there before all the world and also in the lobby of the hotel where I was staying at, I spoke this sinner's prayer. And he was right. He told me that God doesn't lie and that I was saved at that moment. And sure enough, that was when I was born again. It changed my life, my perception about the Bible. It went from confusing to understandable, to something enjoyable. Now, of course, I don't understand everything in there, but there's stuff in there that is so simple, even a child can uh, be made wise on his salvation in Jesus Christ. And here it is. This isn't rocket science. This is not complicated. If you cry out to the living God, please save me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you believe in your heart that he'll do that, and that he raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. For the, with the heart, man believeth on the righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Now, I hope you do this. I really do. If, you, if you're interested in end time prophecy and stuff like that, uh, go to my site, endtimenews.net. You don't have to join anything. I, I don't want your email. I don't want your personal information. There won't be a, a bot that follows you on the internet to see what you buy and sell. No cookies will be put on your uh, computer, nothing. It's all totally free. And hey, if you don't like it, you didn't pay for it. So guess what? <laughs> You're not out anything. Endtimenews.net. But please, if you want to know God in your life, if you want peace that passes all understanding, and if you want to be rapture ready, if you want to be able to endure the hard tribulations that are coming on this planet, and to be able to stand and before glory, in that day, you need Christ as your ransom sacrifice. You need him as your savior. You need him as your Lord. There's no way I could stand in front of God if I didn't have Christ covering my sins and forgiving me. No way. None of us are perfect. None of us are really any good. But Jesus, perfect, died for our sins that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but has everlasting life. Peace be to you. Have a good night. Now, don't forget to go back to the second slide and, and see how easy all this was.